Good afternoon, this is that one guy. I am in a fantastic mood. It's snowing again here, and I really do mean that. I love the snow. Anyways, I've got a little project going on in my KSP career file. I've decided to, uh, to do something a little different than I normally do. Uh, this, <clears throat> this is my first time attempting to... Oh, wow, that's wobbly. Uh, this is my first time attempting to create sort of a space infrastructure that got farther than just making a station in the LKO. Uh, what we've got going on here is a ship that I call the Praetor-1. Uh, and this is going to serve as the ferry between uh, the Gavia station, which uh, has... Well, not really featured. I don't think anybody outside of people I know in real life have seen the thing. But uh, it's a, an LKO station that serves as a transfer platform between craft that take off along my runway to what will eventually be craft that go out to the MUN. Uh, while my Pisces 1 craft is fully capable of lunar travel, uh, I prefer to keep the lunar travel uh, to not only vessels that I can control a little easier for docking, but uh, vessels that I can actually put up to seven people in. Um, that having been said, uh, this is just a standard docking mission. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go up to Gavia Station, and I'm going to dock at Gavia Station, transfer some crew to go out to Honoraria Station, which is orbiting the Mun right now, and uh, that'll be the first run of this thing, and it's going to do a little bit of refueling at uh, Honoraria Station as well, as uh, it has a smaller fuel depot than what you'll see on Gavia Station. So I'm going to shut up, I'm going to put a little music on, and I will see you when we get to Honoraria Station. Okay, and we're back. Uh, one thing I would like to point out is that uh, this station is very big. I've got lags bane going right here, uh, and according to my recording software, I'm moving at about 8 frames a second, which that is legendarily bad. Now, we're going to be sending a couple of people uh, out to uh, the Honoraria Station. We're sending Jebediah Kerman uh, back out to Honoraria Station. Uh, he was doing a brief tenure there uh, while the station was being constructed. Uh, Honoraria Station is a lot smaller than uh, Gavia Station. Gavia Station obviously having a uh, fuel dump and multiple docking ports, a uh, power plant, and a habitation module. Now let me take a look at who we have in here a quick second. And uh, let's see, we got Curdo. I think Eldong Kerman needs to go out to uh, Station Honoraria as well. 
Now, one thing I would like to point out while we're out here is, uh, again, my Pisces 1 uh, does a phenomenal job for getting out to Gavia Station with more than enough fuel uh, to the point where I can uh, dock this craft and um, have fuel left over to put into my fuel dump. So every time I do bring a shuttle up, I I say a shuttle, and it's really what it is. It's more of a bus service. Every time I bring a... Uh, Pisces up here, I can actually drain the fuel mostly into this tank and return on the, uh, let's call it fumes. Alright, so we are refueled. Um, we shouldn't need a refuel on this. This is going to be uh, more important as we introduce lander, but uh, for now it's more of a um, it's more of a for the future thing. Now, uh, we had a very good lunar eclipse, which means I th think I'm good to go for, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm good to go for my transmunar injection. So let's go ahead and undock this. Uh, turn on my RC. Oh, ooh, 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 that's not what I wanted. There we are. We're gonna do this. Back away from the station, and until I clear that. Now, while this is moving away. I just need to turn off this RCS so that I'm not bleeding this out. Which I have a little bit. I can correct for that with uh, the stuff that I have aboard a Pisces 1, no problem. I'm going to do some fuel transferring on my uh, when I decide to send this back. But as you see, uh, I am not getting good frame rate. Now, I could uh, very easily correct the frame rate. Um, by moving my graphics down to fast rather than uh, detailed. However, um, I really do like uh, producing very clean looking videos uh, for my YouTube channel. And once this gets 2.5 kilometers away, uh, we're not going to have an issue anymore. Uh, this here is actually, uh, it was used to build part of the Honoraria station. However, I don't need this part, and it's going to come crashing back down into Kerbin, is what that trajectory is. Uh, so yeah, uh, right now we're just burning out to the Mun, and uh, within maybe a couple of seconds here, Flagsbane will turn off. There we go, yep. It's far enough away that it doesn't need to render it, and I'm back up to my full frame rate, and that's much cleaner looking. Uh, that's the only downside with having a big station for infrastructure. I'm going to, again, shut up, put on some music, and uh, I will see you when we dock with Station Honoraria. And I'm back. Uh, what we have here is we have the ability to dump off some RCS if we so chose. Uh, but more importantly, I feel like I can dump quite a bit of this fuel. So what we're going to do is we're going to transfer the fuel into that tank. Excellent. That was part one of this mission. Now obviously I'm going to need some fuel for the return, and I feel like about a Hundred liters of oxidizer, hundred fifty. Now let's call it an even two hundred. 
210. All right. All right, that looks like about appropriate amounts, and I have some fuel left. And the reason I, you know what, let's go 250. Eh, close enough. There we go. The reason I feel like I can get away with so little fuel is I can use arrow breaking for this craft. Uh, just dip it into Kerbin's atmosphere a bit. With a slight planar correction, I should be able to get back to the Gavia station, which is my end goal. Uh, eventually there will be a lander and a uh, sky crane craft, uh, the combined craft, will dock here, and that's what this fuel is for. Now I understand that uh, doing this trip is going to be uh, less effective than just sending up a rocket every single time. However, in the intervening time between when I get this into a transmooner injection, I can actually run a couple of Pisces flights, which is probably what would happen uh, in a real-world situation like this. Um, and uh, when I needed to, I would switch back to this craft, put it in a lunar orbit, get my close approach down, uh, and yeah, it's going to be a routine service. The problem is, the limiting factor is the farther out I get, the less fuel I can have. Now, I have ideas in my head to put some saddle tanks on this uh, in order to have a consistent fuel flow. However, that doesn't really solve my problems. Uh, I mean, I, I could rebuild a craft like this, but for now, for now, this is a good start. Now, I do want to begin uh, the process of transferring crew onto the Honoraria Station from my craft. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put this astronaut into my habitation uh, backslash uh, power node. Now you'll notice that this station is a lot smaller for a couple of practical reasons. Uh, the first of which is I, uh, alright Jeb, <gasps> no don't you smack into that. Okay. <laughs> oh, that, that could have been bad. Uh, the first reason for having a smaller station out here is I don't really need it to handle the volume of spacecraft traffic that I need the Gavia station to handle. Uh, in a role-playing type basis. Um, the other reason is it's a lot more fuel efficient to just build a smaller station out here. Now there will probably be a sister station which I would need to look up the word for it but it's probably going to be the exact opposite of Honoraria um, orbiting Minmus and Minmus is a little bit easier. I could actually probably have a smaller fuel dump on Minmus. Uh, simply because I would need less lander fuel to get down there. Now, this does not have a lander yet. Currently, it's just an orbiting station in my uh, role-playing that I've got going on on paper and in my head. Uh, this is currently being set up for long-term uh, support of surface bases, which is actually the whole point of this station. Uh, the idea is, rather than sending up, say, an Apollo-style craft, I can just send up a mission to Gavia Station, Gavia Station, people bound for the MUN hop on to the Praetor 1, they get off the Praetor 1 at Honoraria Station, and then uh, I can support, I'm assuming, about four surface bases uh, from this one station, and I've got it at a slightly inclined angle so that I can hit very uh, interesting spots on the MUN. So now let's see if this thing works on the way back, and I've got our pilot in here, John Lee, and he looks like he's raring to go. So uh, let's go ahead and speed this up a little bit because it really doesn't matter what time of day I don't need to land this back at uh, the KSC, which is a downside that I had when I was using my Honoraria craft in order to attempt... Um, Alright, let's see here if I do this. I think I want to start moving away from this over the Brumler Crater. Alright, so we're going to undock, switch craft, and pull away slowly from these 
uh, solar panels as I do not want to damage them at all with any engine exhaust. And here we go. Um, again, like I said, this craft is very simplistic. I basically just wanted a craft that uh, is small enough with small enough profile that I can get to the Mun dock at the station and then uh, basically get back to Kerbin with as little RCS waste as possible because I feel like that's going to be my limiting factor. And here we go. Alright. So we're going to aero break at about 40 kilometers and it's going to take us about 8 hours to get back there. So, um, I can time compress that into almost nothing. All that little loop-de-loo that you do. Alright. Bloop. Alright, let's just double check. 39.418, that's fine. And again, like I said, I would be running uh, missions up and out to the Honoraria Station while this was going on. Um, alright. Here we go. The real test to see if this can be a viable craft to get to and from the MUN uh, is can I aero break this uh, without re entering Kerbin? Um, surface trajectory, I guess. <clears throat> Certainly, I do have my orbit uh, at least going nearly the right uh, trajectory, but. Oh, that's cool. We're sort of re-entering over the KSC. Um, Alright, let's see what we've got going on here. Okay, it's coming down slowly. Alright, now this may require a couple of passes, but hopefully this will get us sort of close enough that I might be able to... Alright, let's set this as the target. Um, I was actually, uh, the reason I'm doing the aero braking instead of using enough fuel is because I was reading, uh, XKCD the other week, and, uh, basically it goes like this. Uh, I could bring up enough fuel to, uh, come back down, or not really come back down, I'm sorry, to slow my velocity enough to, uh, dock with the station, however... Um, that's a really inefficient way to do things, especially if I need to get fuel out to the MUN to eventually fuel missions to surface bases. Uh, I need that station to be relatively self-sufficient with that. Um, I thought about uh, downloading, a, downloading a keythane mod, uh, but as it sits, I feel like this is a good alternative. And you'll notice that my orbit is coming in quite a bit to the point where I will have a four-hour orbit, possibly less, because I'm going to be spending so much time in the atmosphere here. I just passed my periaps, which means I'm coming out of the thick part of the atmosphere. And, uh... I'm definitely still moving way too fast to slow down here uh, in order to dock, but... Um, possibly after one more pass I'll be uh, in a position where I can dock, so I will bring you back in uh, when that comes to fruition. So without further ado, music. I may have made a mistake. 
Um, well, uh, let's switch back to orbit a quick second. Um, I may have made a mistake in that I may need more fuel to... Oh, boy. Um, yep, there it is. Uh, in that I may need more fuel in order to uh, reconnect with the station, but... Um, I'm not too worried right now, as I will be able to definitely slow down uh, by increasing my atmospheric drag, among other things. Um, I guess I needed two passes. I was kind of hoping that the flight there and the flight back would take about the same amount of time, but I guess I was wrong. Um, alternatively, I should have brought more fuel. Um... I mean, in the worst case scenario, I have sent up a ship to refuel this, and it's, it's not a complete wash, but we're going to see what we can do here. Uh, right now, I'm bleeding quite a bit of RCS, which is fine, because I've got plenty of it, and uh, I'm really concerned about the repeatability of this mission, um, in that uh, I'm going to need to redesign the Pisces 1 just ever so slightly in order to put more accessible RCS on it. Um... Which, which, you know, I, I was hoping that I wouldn't have to do that, but uh, if I if I can make just a little RCS bank on it, we'll be fine. I'm just trying to remember my curb and reentry protocols. I think if I get myself down to 37, 35, somewhere in that neighborhood, I will do some aggressive arrow baking without reentering. Uh, so yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna attempt that. See how? Oh, whoops! Oh, mm -hmm. whoa. Really? Back to 0.5 meters, nice. I guess, you know, I'm back down to the same orbit that I was, that makes sense. Uh, but, you know, you know, whatever. I don't know why that's intersect 2 and that's intersect 1. Um, yeah, so, we're just gonna, there we are. We're just gonna sort of do this aggressive arrow break and, you know, see where that leaves us with RCS and um, fuel. So yeah, and this is this is why I don't normally broadcast experimental flights like this, even though, you know, I kind of knew what I was doing. Uh, yeah, so here we go. this mission was a spectacular failure. Um, I'm going to have to work out my arrow breaking charts, but at the very least it allows me to redesign this ship. Uh, who do we have on board here? Doden? Uh, yeah, we're going to do our best to save your life, but uh, it's not looking too good, buddy. Um, I did a little bit too aggressive of an arrow break, a little bit too late in this mission. Uh, I'm going to have to look into all of my arrow breaking tables, so... Again, like I said, uh, this is why I don't really like broadcasting my uh, preliminary flights, as this thing was supposed to stay up in space forever. Uh, instead, on its maiden voyage, it sank. You know what? I have a morbid sense of humor. Um, there we are. Alright, so we're going to... Um, increase the speed on this by four times, because, you know, I have things to do, and I'm sure you do, too. Uh, alas. As soon as I saw that apoapsis come back down under 70 kilometers, I knew I was screwed. But, hey, you know, whatever, and KSP is a learning experience. I just wish, you know, I'd created a clone file to try this in. But, uh, yeah, so this is going to be really interesting. I don't have any parachutes whatsoever, and I have no idea how much Delta V I actually have in this thing. Um, maybe I need to do more research, I don't know. <sighs> Either way, this descent is taking for freaking ever. But hey, you know what, at the very least, we refueled our uh, fuel depot, so... 
Yeah, I've got a couple of ideas on what I want to do in order to uh, in order to make this more effective. A, I need to add more fuel to the thing. Uh, B, I think I need to do some other stuff too. All right, so we are doing some aggressive deceleration. There we are. Although one conscious choice I would like to point out is you'll notice there are no solar power solar panels or any sort of power generation on this thing. Uh, that was actually a conscious choice. I put some batteries on it because the idea is this thing is going to be going between space stations that have their own methods of generating power. Uh, therefore, all it would need to do is just dock and recharge, and there's more than enough uh, battery power here to get you to and from the MUN. Um, I mean, heck, I barely recharged, and most of the recharging was due to lighting my engines. So I do have maybe one way to save this guy, which we're gonna we're gonna attempt this. So I'm gonna find some dramatic music and I'm gonna just put it over me talking right now. And I'm also gonna sort of role play uh, ground control. So here we go. Ah, uh, Dodd and Kerman, uh, you need to uh, throttle up your craft when you are approaching the ground. We're gonna try and soft bump you. Dodd and Kerman come in. How do you read me? Stop smiling like an idiot over. Dodd and Kerman, this is really serious. Holy crap, they're approaching very fast. Alright. Dodd and Kerman, you are slowing down. Dodd and Kerman, I am not entirely sure that you would be able to survive this. Dodd and Kerman, these are off out of the way. Dodd and Kerman, you actually not survive this. Dodd and Kerman, I may have lied. Dodd and Kerman! Dodd and Kerman! Dodd and Kerman, no! Dodd and Kerman, holy crap! A Kerbal hero! Dun -dun 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 -dun. Wait, I actually need some play. Dodd and Kerman, yeah! Woo! Alright, that was terrible. I need to rework this vessel. <laughs> this has been that one guy. Thanks for watching.